Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Father, you are the mighty God, the great I am. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you for your loving kindness is better than life. Today, minister to your people. Let there be life. Let there be healing. Let there be deliverance. Let there be transformation. In Jesus' mighty name, and God's people said amen. My name is Pastor Chuzi, and this is Command Your Day. Tonight is our communion service, a miracle night, prayer night, prophecy night, name it. Get ready. It's all going to happen on today's broadcast. Welcome. Please share as you come in. Jennifer, welcome. Princess Ruth, welcome. I am live on Instagram and Facebook at the same time. Adrian, you are welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Deal with your enemies. Deborah, welcome. Deal with your enemies. Daisy Overin, welcome. Today, we're going to learn and discuss on how to deal with our enemies. Exodus 15 and 6, Exodus 15 and 6, Thy right hand, O Lord, good evening, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, had dashed in pieces the enemy, joyfuls to bless. You're welcome on Instagram and you're welcome on Facebook. Thy right hand, O Lord, had dashed in pieces the enemy. Wow. Thank you for those hearts. Dashed in pieces the enemy. That's awesome. First John 5 and 4. 1 John 5 and 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory. Abbasid, day you're welcome. Mommy, welcome. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Faith is what overcomes every enemy. Let me make it higher. Faith is what overcomes every enemy. Every enemy. Pastor Joseph, welcome. Sima, you are so welcome. Faith is what overcomes every enemy, every hindrance, every force. Rochelle, you're welcome. We have been taught that prayer uh, and or fasting or spiritual, no, or spiritual warfare and all these things are the things of binding and casting. Charles, you're welcome that those are the forces that overcome the enemy. No, no, no. Laura, you are welcome, <laughs> Dr. Laura. What overcomes is faith. First John 5, 4, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Deacon and Sister, welcome. Even our faith. So our faith is what overcomes the enemy. Carmelita, welcome. You can do anything else, Charles, you're welcome. But faith in the blood of Jesus, faith in God, it is the faith that does the work. It's not the prayers. Prayers are good and all the wonderful things. They're wonderful. But faith is the victory. Faith in God, for without faith it's impossible to please him. For whosoever is coming to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So it is the faith we have in God that gives us the victory. This is, I want you to have a change of mind here. Ch Cherise, you're welcome, because... I was, I thought that you bind the enemy, you fast, you pray, you do spiritual warfare, and you overcome the enemy. That's wonderful. Those are wonderful things. But without faith, it's impossible for our prayers and fasting and binding and losing and all the spiritual warfare to work. Faith is our spiritual money with which we buy. 
very important. You can pray any prayer, but where there is no faith, there is no victory. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. I don't know how to say it till you get it. Okay. So who is an enemy? Who is an enemy? Is it somebody who hates, who doesn't like us on the job? Is it a neighbor who doesn't like us? Please, can you share? This is a very important message. I want you to share, 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 like we always do on Command Your Day. Share at least 10 times so that people can get the notifications. Thank you for sharing. God bless every hand sharing on today. Glory be to God. Who is an enemy? Somebody who doesn't like you in church, somebody who doesn't like uh, you on the job, somebody, no, 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 thank you for sharing, Mika. An enemy is, number one, somebody who is against your anointing. An enemy is somebody, hello, Rosemary, who is against your anointing. Thanks for sharing. An enemy is, listen now, listen, so you can pray. That's why we keep praying and nothing has happened. But from today, victory is your portion in the name of Jesus. Thanks for sharing, Rochelle. Thank you so much. An enemy is, number one, somebody who is or a, an entity, a spirit or person who is against your anointing. That is an enemy. An example, Delilah was out to destroy Samson. Now that's a real enemy. Hallelujah. Number two, and I don't want to dwell on it. Number two, Elo Joy, any force that is against your finances. Listen now. Any force against your finances is an enemy. Any force that wants to see you empty-handed, wretched, begging without anything, that's an enemy. I, I don't like to, de I like to be specific. I hope I'm helping somebody so that when you're praying, you're praying on target. Who is an enemy? Oh, somebody who doesn't like me. No. Are you against my anointing? You're an enemy. Number two, are you against my finances? You are my enemy. Number three, who is an enemy? Anyone who is against your destiny. Your destiny. Anyone who is against your destiny. Thank you. Thank you for that feedback. Anyone who is against your destiny or your star is an enemy. Example, Herod was an enemy. Pharaoh was an enemy. God had told Abraham, your children will go into captivity and then they're going to come back 400 years later, 430 years later. Pharaoh doesn't want the children of God to go fulfill destiny. Anybody who is against your prophetic destiny Anybody who is against the prophecy of God for your life is an enemy. And in the name of Jesus, the one we serve, the one who called us and has kept us, I decree and declare that every enemy of your anointing, every enemy of your finances, every enemy of your destiny, every enemy of your calling for your sake, they shall go down, never to rise up again. In the name of Jesus. And God's people said amen. Receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Jennifer, thank you. The fourth definition of an enemy is any force against your health. Any force against your health is an enemy. Any force against your health is an enemy. A woman with the issue of blood, bled for 18 years. Now, 
that sickness, that disease, that infirmity is a serious enemy. Hallelujah. And I want to pray again and decree and declare over you that every enemy in your health, in your body, in your anointing, in your finances, in your calling, in your destiny that is out to destroy you, as you type or shout amen where you are, let them go down in the name of Jesus. Let them go down in the name of Jesus. Go, go, welcome. Let them go down. In Domaranda Sambro Tengelanda Rabapo Stongremida. In the name of Jesus. Who is an enemy? Number five. An enemy is any force against your children. Any force, person or force or entity against your children, your family. Huh. Daniel and the three Hebrew boys in Babylon were faced with an enemy. What was the enemy? And the enemy was the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, who commanded that they change their names, change their food, change their diet, and force them to worship a false god. Now, that's an enemy. Of course, God dealt with him. And whoever and whatever is pushing you to do what you don't want to do, to disobey God, to displease God, to live unjustly, for your sake, they are going down now in the name of Jesus. Any enemy, any force against your children. Man, these are things that can guide you in your prayer time and you begin to deal with them in detail, one after the other. Number six, who is an enemy? Let's start revise. Number one, an enemy is any force or person against your anointing, your spiritual power, your spiritual strength, sleep, tiredness, fatigue, prayerlessness. These are enemies against your prayer life, your spiritual life. Number two, an enemy is any force or entity against your finances. Number three, those against your destiny, your star. Number four, those against your health and your wellness. Hey, Sandra is in the house. Welcome. Number five, any force against your children, your tomorrow. Number six, here we go. We're now at number six. Who is an enemy? Any force or entity against your marriage, hoping to get married or just got married, or inability to get married, and or to stay married. Thank you, Mika. Thank you so much. Glory be to God. That's an enemy. We just like to pray in the body of Christ. We just pray, just pray. No, no, no. We need to pray with precision, with clarity, with understanding. Thank you, Lord. So when you're dealing with a so-called enemy, that somebody rolled their eyes at you on the job, that's not your enemy. Or somebody doesn't like you because you're doing very well. No, 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 no. You have to define the terms of engagement. In what way are you my enemy? Are you a threat to my existence? You got to pray with precision, Pastor. Yes, sir. They are against your marital destiny. That's an enemy. Number seven, an enemy is a force or person, Professor Matthew, welcome, against your work, against your work, against your career, against your job, against your business, against the work of your hands. Now, that is a serious enemy. Those who don't want you to eat, don't want you to drink, don't want you to dwell in the land of the living and flourish, in ministry, in business, in, 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 uh, on the job. Those are real enemies. 
Remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness and high places and all that stuff. Yes, I know. But I have found that, hear me now, that in as much as we wrestle not against flesh and blood, we wrestle not, we wrestle not against human beings. Hear me now. There are certain human beings that have totally given themselves over to the powers of darkness. You know some, I know some, you may not know them. Some of them you would never know until the Lord opens your eyes to see. So right now, I pray for understanding. I pray for revelation. I pray that God open your eyes and expose the people who are Judases in your camp, who are your enemies, who pretend they love you, pretend they, they, they kiss you, but they're looking for a knife to stab, stab you. I pray that God will cause them to destroy themselves. In the name of Jesus, let them madose prakande ladies ti patranedes. Let them destroy themselves. Let their wisdom be turned to foolishness. Let their hands fail in their enterprise. Let their own snares catch them. Let the angel of the Lord pursue them. Let their daytime be slippery like midnight. In the name of Jesus. As they gather whatever they've gathered to shoot, to deploy, to employ against us, let it go back to them into their camp in the name of Jesus. Remember, we define who an enemy is. An enemy is one who is against your anointing, against your finances, against your destiny, against your health, against your children and grandchildren, against your family, against your marriage, against your work and your employment. Hello, Mary, welcome. Those are enemies. So that somebody doesn't is saying stuff about you, that, that's not important. Or somebody doesn't like you. Don't wait. Listen, write it down. Choose your enemies carefully. The real enemies do not show themselves. Hear me, real enemies don't show themselves. They hide, they blend in, they, 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 they act so nice, they're so friendly. You would never suspect them. I remember years ago, oh, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Years ago, we discovered that witches and wizards are not adults. <laughs> Hear me now. In spiritual warfare, witches and wizards are children, 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds, 12-year-olds, maybe 13, 14, maybe 15 max. Those are the real dangerous witches and wizards. The, the adults initiate the, who, how would you suspect a child? And I was in this crusade years ago. <laughs> I've told the story before. And boy, when the, I, it was impossible to, and I just asked for a bucket of water. And they got me a bucket of water. I said, Father, turn this bucket of water to bucket of fire. And I threw it out on the crowd. Oh my, you should have, we, <laughs> 12 year olds, 13 year olds, 14 year olds, 10 year old children, witches and wizards. And boy, it was something else. Confessing. Now, how would you believe that a 10 year old child, I'm not saying every 10 year old, please, please, I'm not saying children are just, you know, we're not labeling anybody, but I'm just giving you an idea or a, to de explain to you that your real enemies are close to you. They are nice. They greet you. They talk to you. They know you. They kiss you if possible. They're very nice and very friendly, but mm-mm. 
So in dealing with them, therefore, we require extreme wisdom. You've got to ask for discernment. I pray again that in the name that is above every name, that God will open our eyes, open our spiritual eyes and ears, and cause our enemies to expose themselves. Yes, sir, to expose themselves, Susie, to expose themselves in a dimension, in a, in a, in a way that they will, it will be obvious, and not just so expose themselves, that God will deliver you and deliver us from the traps, the snares of the enemy. For our soul is escaped like a bird out of the snare of the fowl. MJ Diamond Girl, you're so welcome. Glory be to God. Okay, now I was praying and all of what I'm sharing to you, obviously, you can tell that today is very anointed. Came to me in the place of prayer. And the Lord, I said, so how do we deal with our enemies? Royal crown, you're welcome. How do we deal with our enemies? Should we just bind them? The Lord said, not really. Cast them down? Not really. <laughs> You know, do the things you and I have done, and these enemies are still there. So we can't, are we to bind them or loose them or curse them or fight them or <laughs> what are we going to do with them? I have some keys that will help you. Number one, how do we deal with the enemy? Now we've got to the meat. All of what I've shared is just to build up uh, for almost. 25 minutes, I was just introducing, laying a foundation. Now, let's run. And don't forget, it's our communion night. Please get your bread, get your communion ready, juice, ribena, what have you, uh, grape juice, and get your bread, crackers, biscuit, a piece of bread. We break bread every Friday night. Hallelujah. Glory be. Dickness Harry. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How do we deal with our enemies? Number one, run from them. <laughs> Therefore, like you welcome. He who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. When Israel couldn't deal with Pharaoh, they began to run to flee Egypt. And of course, God led them up against the Red Sea. So number one, you can run from your enemies. Number two, you can beg your enemies. When Hagar ran from Sarah, God said to her, go back and submit yourself to her. You, number one, you can run from your enemy. Number two, you can beg them and make peace with them. Number three, you can pray for your enemies. Jesus said, turn the other cheek. Pray for them who, who misuse you. You can pray for your enemies. Number four, you can surrender to them and submit to them. That's doable. You can surrender and submit to them. Number four, number what now? Let's start again. Number one, you, you can run from them. Number two, you can beg them. Number three, you can pray for them. Number four, you can surrender to them. Okay, now number five, you can send them a peace offering, a gift. Number five, you can send them a gift to placate them, to make them calm down and they forgive and say it's okay. After all, a man's gift makes room or makes a way for him. For the, for, for him. Number six, you can send a, a middle person to settle issues. Jesus said, if you're going to bring your offering to the altar, you've got to go make peace with your enemy. You can get a middle person 
to make peace and educate and settle and hear both sides and, you know, sort things out. It's possible. It's possible. Nothing wrong with that. Number seven, number seven, you can fight them. Okay? But remember I was saying you've got to fight with wisdom. You can fight them. You can fight them. And then number eight, you can ignore them. Most Christians would rather ignore their enemy. Oh, no, and, and I thought that ignoring the enemy will make them frustrated and they would leave you alone and see that you're not interested. Mm -mm. Never ignore a bully. Never ignore an enemy. You must do something. You can't see an enemy and say, well, I, I don't want to pay you no mind. You're, you're an entity. You can't do me nothing. No, 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 no. Never, ever ignore your enemy. Number nine, you can threaten your enemy. You can threaten your enemy. All of what I'm sharing, God give me one time in the place of prayer. You can, and we give him the glory for that. You can ignore your enemy Number nine, you can threaten them. If you dare mess with me again, I'm going to deal with you. You can threaten them. You can even go to court and get a, a judgment or restriction or something against them. You can threaten them. Number 10, you can destroy them. Totally wipe them out. You can destroy them. Number 12, you can get help from other people to fight them for you. You can hire somebody to fight them for you. Somebody who's greater, you hire somebody else to do the fighting for you. Number what now? Number 12, I believe. Number 12, you can... Ask God to fight them. You can ask God Almighty to fight them. The battle belongs to the Lord, and uh, the Lord will fight for you. You will hold your peace, uh, Exodus 14 and 14. You can get God to fight for that, fight for you. Number 13, you can pray till God touches them. You can pray and pray and pray and pray and pray till God touches their hearts to leave you alone. You, you can do that. You can pray and ask God to touch their hearts so they can leave you alone. Number 14. Number 14. You can ask God to keep them busy. You can ask God to keep them busy with a big problem or a bigger enemy, bigger than them, or issues or something, so they can leave you alone. You can ask God to give them a problem that will keep them distracted and they'll just forget about you. That's valid. Number what now? Number 14? Number 14. Uh, you can feed them and win them with love. You can use love. Love conquereth all. You can use love and love them till they leave you alone. It's possible. You can use love and love them and love them and love them. You turn the other cheek, they slap you. You turn, you keep turning till... Okay, so now number 15, you can use love, love, and love them, and keep pouring into them, and keep talking to them. You can love them, and love conquers all, okay? Number 16, you can command the earth to swallow them. You can command the earth to swallow them. Remember when they came against Moses, God himself opened the earth and they all fell in and God swallowed them. So it's, the earth swallowed them. So it's possible 
This is number 16. You can, you can, God can open the earth and wipe them off, swallow them. Okay. Number, number 17, you can educate them. You can educate them. Okay. Number 17, you can educate them and go and explain your point of view and your own perspective and try to persuade them that what they're doing is not good and that they should repent for the kingdom of God, draw it nigh, and that they should uh, walk in love and you give them Bible passages, you may win them. I mean, there are many weapons you can use. Number what? Number 18. You can get a stronger person to fight them. You can get a stronger person to fight them. You can, in other words, you get their enemy to rise up against them. You can get your their enemy. You look at their enemy and you cause their enemy to rise up against them. It's possible. That's possible. That's doable. Mm -hmm. And it's valid. And number, number what? Number 19. You can leave town. Rupa, you're welcome. You can leave town. Somebody's asking, what if I don't know? What if you don't know your enemies? It's easy if you know who they are. If you don't know them, that's what I'm saying. It's so easy to... The people you think are your enemies are not. Before somebody attacks you, let me explain that. You have been discussed. Somebody discussed you. The, maybe at lunchtime, somebody spoke against you and persuaded somebody to go after you. Things just don't happen. So it's not, my point is this, it's not only the person you are looking at. It's not one person. Enemies do not operate alone. They operate in gangs and cliques and networks and I used to make that mistake. I had somebody, who, a pastor, who was so hostile to me in 1999, 1999. And somebody took me to introduce to him in Atlanta. I just was visiting. I wasn't living here then. Now I live in Atlanta and ain't no gate of hell or any satanic demonic agent. I mean, I've been here for, this is 20 years, nothing, no force, no demonic satanic entity has been able to stop what the God, what the God of heaven is doing. And we give him the glory for that. So they don't operate alone. They are in concert. They're in a network. They discuss, somebody complained to somebody who complained to somebody, who complained to somebody, who analyzed and they agreed that you're a threat. And this pastor was so host, I was shocked, never met him in my life. It was years later I found out that there, have, there were some discussions and some analyses and they agreed and concluded that Pastor Chusey was a, a threat. 1999 that this guy, Pastor Chusey, is a threat. How? What if he comes to Atlanta to open up a church? Well, the devil is a liar. 2002, Glory House was started, and we're still pressing on. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. I want to prophesy over somebody. Whether they are hidden enemies, or a bunch of them, or a network of them, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our King and our Deliverer, as many as have come out against you or can ever come out against you, for your sake they shall fall. God will scatter them. God will confound them. God will confuse them. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you're not fighting one person in your office or on your job. Mm -mm. There's always a speaker 
Thank you, Lord. There's always a speaker. Should I go there, Lord? Okay. There's always a speaker, the one who comes to attack you with words. There's always a planner. There's always a planner. There's a speaker. There's a planner or a strategist. Okay? There's, it's, don't just go after the one who came to say stuff. There's somebody who sent them. There's a planner. There's a speaker. There's an empowerer. There's somebody giving them the moral power, the spiritual power, the mental, emotional power. At least every enemy has three networks. We are often fooled by those who speak. Those who speak are different from those who plan. Those who plan are different from those who empower those people. At least three. Now, it could be 30, 40, 100. You don't know. But all, for we are more than a conqueror. Yes, a trinity of enemies. A trinity of enemies. But we are more than conqueror through Christ Jesus. Let's come back because I'm going somewhere with this. Just stick with me. Please share on Facebook. Please share. Get your communion elements ready. Today, every Herod, every Pharaoh, every Nebuchadnezzar, every Judas, those enemies we know, we don't know, shall be drowned by the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I hope I'm blessing somebody. Okay, so number what now? Yeah, I was saying you can leave town. You can run away. Okay? You, you, you can leave town, run away. And then the next one, number what now? Uh, is it 20? I believe 19. Okay, number 20. You can threaten them. <laughs> you can threaten them. And say, oh, in the name of Jesus, uh, if you try this again, if, 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 if you try it again, I will deal with you. Don't mess with me. You know, do you know who I am? Bullies don't understand spiritual threats. Sorry. A dog is coming after you. You're threatening him. Don't you know who I am? That I speak in tongues? Don't you know I'm born again? <laughs> well, he, he may threaten them and they run away and go reinforce and come back. And number 21, and that is one of, I don't know if I mentioned that, or you can fight them. Fight. So there are 21 ways by which to deal with an enemy. What I'm sharing with you, you've never heard before. I never heard before. God gave all of this to me in one download in prayer, in preparation for today's broadcast. I have up to 23 here, but let's stop at 21. You can fight them. Well, Pastor Tuesday, at what point should I now fight? <laughs> uh, fight when you're sick and tired of them. Fight early. Strike early. Strike now. Strike tomorrow. Strike in the noontime. Strike in the nighttime. Like I always say, all weapons are spiritually approved by God. All weapons can be used all at the same time. Strike now. Fight now. When those 42 boys were messing with Elisha, who just got the fresh anointing, double portion, double. He called two she beers and they wiped away 42 boys. Why? That was so wicked and cruel. Yeah, but why did God permit that? Because those 42 boys would have grown up and been a, a threat and made the life of Elisha and his ministry miserable. 
the sons of wickedness, the sons of Belial. Oh, I want to pray that every enemy that has pursued you, threatened you, harassed you, messed with you, in the day, in the night, those you don't even know, forces that attack people and they wake up and can't, forces behind mysterious losses, mysterious diseases, mysterious tragic things, mysterious delays and frustrations. In the name of Jesus, for your sake, for my sake, let them fall, let them fall, let them fall and never rise again. By fire. In the name of Jesus, I'm just giving you the fuel, the gasoline, so that you can deal with them tonight, tomorrow morning, this, whenever. You, you've got to take these 21 enemies and begin to crush them. You can use all. If I were you, I will use all 21. Against. Don't under, underestimate your enemy. Don't say, oh, it, 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 this is small. Mm -mm. Remember? Before they attack, you, they already did their homework, okay? I hope I'm helping somebody. Thank you, Lord. Please share again on Facebook, share on Instagram. I am live, and later I'm going to post this on YouTube so that you can go there and, and just listen and listen and listen till something sparks on the inside of you. Hallelujah. It's time to fight them. Whoever, remember who an enemy is? Let's go over it again. Those who are against your anointing, those who are against your finances, those who are against your destiny, those who are against your health, those who are against your children, those against your marital destiny, whether you're married, single, divorced, single father, single mother, married, doesn't they don't care. Those against your work, your job, your career, your business. Okay? Oyin Damola Praise, welcome on Instagram. We're dealing with cruel forces, terrible forces, wicked forces. And I pray that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that our enemies will go down, that God will steal the mouth of the avenger, that the wrath of man will see, say amen to that, that God will strike them, that the earth will open up and swallow our enemies, that as many as gather together for our sakes, they shall fall. In the name of Jesus. Let God arise. Let all our enemies be scattered. In the name of Jesus. Whoever, whatever has sworn that we will not flourish, we will not excel, our children will not do well, we will not have good health, we will have a spirit of begging, never having enough, or the anointing, the oil of God on our lives. Father, destroy them in the name of Jesus. Say amen to that. Destroy them. Uproot them, remove them. Ah, Shamato, I wish I could have an all night prayer meeting. And we deal just three minutes for with each of these 20. I command the earth to swallow them in the name of Jesus. Don't be nice, don't be gentle. Don't say, oh, well, it's just a little office politics. Oh, it's just a little something. Well, they can have it. You give them one inch, they take a mile. 
Never run from an enemy. Never back down. Never beg. Never surrender. Even when you're sweating and hurting, don't ever think it. And I've seen people say to me, oh, Pastor Chusey, this is too much. I can't take it. Oh, if they want the job, they can have it. Yeah. Pastor, I'm just tired. I, I, if, if, it's, if they want my husband, let them take. I'm tired. Hello? <laughs> Crystal, you're welcome. Really? Well, Pastor, you just don't understand. If they want my husband, they can have it. I'm tired. I'm just tired. I'm just tired with everything. You, really? So you're tired with life? Well, Pastor, I just, I can always get another job. If they want the job, they can take it. Pastor, I'm just, I'm just, I, don't, I just want my peace. I just want my peace. <laughs> the enemy you run from is the enemy that you've empowered to come after you some more. These are stubborn, ruthless, wicked, demonic, satanic forces. Whether they are human or demonic or spiritual, they are ruthless. You run, they come after you. There is no mercy. There's no kindness in them. Well, Pastor, yeah, but Jesus there said we should turn the other cheek. Well, you've been turning the other cheek. How long are you going to keep? You turn the other cheek because somebody who slapped you is not quite hefty. You should come to Glory House. I got some hefty men, men who eat very well. <laughs> not people like us who eat uh, vegetables and fruits. <laughs> There are some men who are have, they eat well. I mean, you can tell they eat well. If they slap you one time, you, you, you I pray you. He said, "Well, Pastor, I just don't know. Well, you know, I have seen them all. Some people, Pastor, I'm just tired. I've had people say, well, well, they're tired of living. They they want to die. What?" Did God say so? Did God call you to quit? Did your parents quit? Are you still here? Hey, Chris. There's no quitting. Oh, well, Pastor, I just don't know why. Everywhere I go, they hit me. All these enemies, Pastor, I'm just overwhelmed. Honey, welcome to life. If you are not a threat to the kingdom of hell, they won't bother with you. It's an endorsement. It's an affirmation that you're carrying something precious. You are a threat. You are anointed. You are called. You are you. You have something in you. Well, Pastor, I just don't know how come uh, all the time. I'm just, I'm just tired. I'm just tired. You're not tired. Were you tired? <laughs> you will know. I pray for somebody that strength. You will go from strength to strength. Well, Pastor, it's always this. Today is car problems. Tomorrow is real estate problems. The next day is clients. Oh my God, Pastor, the next day is job. The next day is my health. The next day is my husband. The next day is in the church. I don't know why they hit me so much, Pastor. All that negative talk makes the enemy happy. All that negative talk makes the enemy happy. That, yay, we're dealing with her. Any Julius, you're welcome. Never, never, never groan. Never, never complain. Never, never. And then you hear people say, I don't know if God is still there in heaven. Hello? Well, Pastor, I know, I know, but I don't know. Can you, you know, can you ask God why he's punishing me? If God were to punish you, you wouldn't be alive right now. Don't let all that talk come out of your mouth. Don't let the enemy catch you sweating. Stay with it. Don't quit. Don't give up. Stay with it.
flowing the blood of Jesus. Fast again. Pray again. Sow again. Stand again. Worship again. Go to church again. The pandemic is going away in many places. Stand again. Read the word again. Declare the word of God again. Use every weapon. Do it again. The Lord said to me before I come up, I came up on this broker, I said, tell somebody to go back and start from the beginning, the way they started the first time. And that is the word for somebody. You can't quit. You can't quit. You can't quit. Slay Nisa, you're welcome, African doll. You cannot quit. You can't leave town. You can't throw in the towel. I don't know how to make it clear. You cannot afford. Listen, your children, your child, your descendants, your family, they're counting on you. Pray again. Believe again. War again. Bind again. Cast down again. Lose again. You may just require one more effort. And the victory is yours. And I pray that in the name of Jesus, victory will come quickly, come quickly to you. That the Egyptians you've seen this far, you will turn around and look them, look for them and find them no more. You cannot quit. You cannot quit. Do you see how many people are depending on your prayer? Yeah, Pastor, but I know I'm just tired. Pastor, I'm just tired. The enemy doesn't know you're tired until you say so. Even if you're tired, still take one step. Still do something. Still trust God. I trust you in the daytime. I trust you in the nighttime. Lord, I trust you all every day of my life. You've got to trust in him. There's no God like our God. He's a consuming fire. And I pray before we go that God Almighty in the next three days, three days, 72 hours, will expose your enemies, will unmask them, will undress them, will show you their weakness, will expose their network, will empower you to tear their jaws, tear the lion, tear the bear, bring down the giant. May the Lord strengthen us. We cannot quit. There's greatness coming. I don't know why they hit me. They can smell greatness on you. You don't smell it. You can't see it, but I can see it. There's something awesome on the horizon for you. You can't quit. God, Father, expose these enemies. Slay them. Swallow some that need to be swallowed. Drown those that need to be drowned. Consume those that need to be consumed. But Father, fight for us because the battle belongs to the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and God's people said, Amen, 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 Amen. Whew, glory be to God. Father, we thank you for the great testimonies that will come out of this service today. In Jesus' name, God's people said, Amen. If you're not born again, or you're not sure, say after me, Lord Jesus, forgive my sins. I receive you into my heart, into my life as my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for the grace to live for you. In Jesus' mighty name, if you prayed that prayer, let me pray for you, Father. In no wise cast them away. They've come to you. Wash them with your blood. Save and keep them to the uttermost. In Jesus' mighty name, and God's people said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Before we take our communion, let's receive our offering for tonight. We receive offerings on Wednesday, okay, on Friday, and on Sunday, all right? I'm thinking of starting 
something, but I'll let you know when it's fully ripe. Uh, if you want to sow, you, some of you, Glory House Command Your Day, all of our church online, on site, you got your tithe, your offering, your seed, your first fruit, your love offering, gift, seed, donation, what have you. Get it ready. There are many platforms we have for giving. You can use Zelle, uh, 770-909-5000. You can use Cash App for those in the U.S., dollar sign, Glory Church. They, they're putting them up on the screen. You can use Zelle, you can use Cash App, you can use our PayPal, go to our website, glorytoglorychurch.org. You can use our website, you can drop that check in the mail, post it. It will get to us, Glory House, 4881 Lawrenceville Highway, Tucker, Georgia, 30084. They're going to shoot, put all that on the screen, you can screenshot it. Let's get into the bread and the wine of the Lord. Tonight's communion is for power, for victory, power for victory, power for victory. You can see all that information being put up on the screen, power for victory. First Corinthians 11, verse 23, for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus, the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. When he had given thanks, the Bible says he break it. Father, thank you for the bread of heaven. We break it and receive it in Jesus' name. This is this signifies his flesh. He was anointed without measure. So when we eat his flesh, resurrected body. Death is not in it. Death can kill him. Death couldn't kill him. No enemy could overcome him. And so receive that victory in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And God's people said, Amen. Verse 25, after the same manner also, he took the cup when he has supped, saying, This cup is New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Get your cup. Father, tonight, this cup signifies his blood and the, the, the life of the flesh is in the blood. You know that. We've shared that. So as you receive fresh anointing, fresh blood, the life force in the blood of Jesus will go into our system and eat up any enemy called sickness or disease. Okay? So we receive the cup of the Lord in the name of Jesus. God's people said, Amen. You can now drink. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray for your people. Those watching, those who watch later, receive victory. Receive vindication. Receive justification. Receive affirmation. Receive confirmation. Receive revelation. Receive a fresh anointing. Let your prayer life catch be on fire again. Let men go out of their way to help you. Let women bless you. Let your seed not be eating up again. Let your harvest come quickly. Let any petition in the courts of heaven against you and I be silenced by the speakings of the blood of Jesus. Let every attacker, every assaulter, every enemy, every adversary waiting at this new door that God is about to open to you, may that adversary be slain in the name of Jesus. May God break the jaw of that dragon that is out to swallow you. May God empower you, even in your dreams, to begin to tear the jaws of lions and bears. May your little slingshot bring down your enemies. May your faith increase and abound and overflow. You will not quit. You will not leave town. You will not throw in the towel. 
In the name of Jesus, mando brendicanto mangrediste paranesde. Money will serve you. People will go out of their way to bless you. I'm speaking it on this last, let me just be sure, I believe this is the last Friday of this month. You will not beg to eat. David said, I was young and now I'm old. I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging for bread. Next week, Friday, we still have one more Friday. I'm praying for God to permit me so we can have 21 days of fire. 21 days of fire for fire. I'm in that mode. Please pray that God will give us clarity and give us direction and lead us. I like to do my things very well under the anointing. I cannot do it in the flesh. And that's why we have so much results because it's either it's anointed or I'm not going to do it. In his presence, there's fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are praise places forevermore. If God is not in it, I would rather shut, shut it down, go to bed, go read my Bible. I pray for skill for you. I pray that your faith will wake up. Stop running. And I pray that your enemies will be the ones that you will see their back and that your enemies will never see your back in the name of Jesus. That wicked woman that has sworn to destroy you in the next seven days, God has been talking to them. They refuse to repent. Let them go down for your sake. In the name of Jesus, I've gone over my time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of this. Whew. When, you, when you get into the flow, you don't want to stop, but I've got to stop. God bless you. Have a great weekend, great week, great month, wherever you are. I'll see you on Sunday from the Sanctuary of Glory House, okay? We're still wearing masks and doing all the social distancing, but people are coming, people are stepping out, and uh, if you're in the Atlanta area, come, 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 it will be lovely to see you. Thanks for watching on Periscope, Facebook, and thanks to those who watch later on YouTube and other platforms, okay? Never forget that it's not over until you win, okay? Thank you. Bye-bye.